they're womaning the table. And uh, I just asked them who they were and where they're from. And they said, well, we're a mobile lawyers. So the, they had a nice van, wheelchair equipped and everything. If somebody needed had a wheelchair and they could meet with them in the van. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a card from them. So if anybody wants to know how I, I guess to get to them, but they're providing law things to underserved areas, and we must be an underserved area. So, but they, mm -hmm. I asked them where they're from, and they looked at each other, and mm, well, I really don't want to know. But one of them was Marshall, I think, and one was farther away. Yeah. But, so kind of an extension of legal aid. I, I'm not sure if it was an official government program or if it was... Oh, just a privately run thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, you usually don't get to just park on a fair board and get... And so they got special permission to put out the thing. On the 19th was Plum Creek. Um, we had a webinar type on uh, censorship and talking about what books to buy, what to display, and... Uh, they had a lot of uh, advice on what to do about public comment at meetings, and I, the lady that was putting on the thing has had plenty of it, I guess. So she was very well versed in what to do and what not to do, and then uh, talked about the Office of Intellectual Freedom. You know, every library manager has uh, some leeway on what books to buy and what books to display, and. She brought up a couple books that they have had. I finally asked, what are the couple books that you've had trouble with? And I got it written down if you want to know. Um, 25th was Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Um, talked about a, the new power line from Becker to Lyon County. And that was one of the things that hopefully will help us. We're on the northern edge of that northern edge of our county that would help to forget the power out of here 26 was a regular meeting 27th was county transit uh, talk about their budget uh, fuel was up 32 percent maintenance is up nine percent tires up 28 percent you know it's just not going to get any better i'm afraid that's all i have to report Damn. Okay. On uh, the seventh, then was our Prime West meeting, and uh, again, update as you probably are all familiar too is where we stand with the lawsuit. That we're still waiting for the judge's opinion on it. Apparently, this judge has got another uh, big case coming up, so we're thinking he's going to want to get this settled before he goes into that. So we don't know at this point just what that judgment's going to be. We're hoping in the we're next hoping. couple weeks. Yeah, we're reading the tea leaves and think it looks pretty good, but uh, you don't know. We'll find out. Then uh, on the following day, then the 8th, I had my Southwest 18 Mental Health Consortium, and, and uh, Luke Como comes and presents to that as well. Uh, he's part of that group. Same same thing, you know, uh, can't hire workers, uh, uncertain where we're at, funding sources, the same stuff we've, we've heard before. Uh, then on the 14th, then, uh, was our uh, uh, Minnesota Hospital Association conference via Zoom, uh, strictly Zoom this time, so sat in on those Thursday, Friday. Also, we had a uh, Pipestone Area Coalition meeting as well, too, with, uh, with uh, Gustafson as well. Uh, they're getting ready for the summer, or I, I should say for the end of summer. Uh, they've got their STARS group that they're working with. There's really nothing new to report there. Uh, and again, you guys all know that our original grant expired a year ago and we're under a new grant now. And then on the 18th, then we had our SMOC meeting down in Worthington. I think I told you all that we have uh, the, the executive session and it had made the recommendation succession committee to the full board and they approved that then on the 18th that we have hired now Lori Gunnick as our new administrator, uh, ex executive director, excuse me, is her title. Uh, but we're going to have to, you know, shore up with more employees too, uh, because she can't certainly can't do that and administer a Head Start by herself. So she's going to need some. We don't know if it's going to be deputies or assistants or just how this can be set up. Uh, we all 
also are need in, in dire need of a financial person there as well too because uh, our finance person had left recently as well so she's really committed to that program though. she she is she she is just a terrific <coughs> asset there then uh, following day on the 19th then we had our uh, certs as this clean energy uh, steering committee that I'm involved with through Minnesota Rural Energy Board as well too so they had a zoom meeting on that then also then uh, Steve and I and uh, Last week involved in that as well too, the hometown fiber. Who else was on it with the home type of fiber? I didn't make that one. It was Bill, I think Bill. Yeah, Bill, Bill you and I. I. Yeah, and kind of a repeat of what they said before. Uh, I, I still can't quite wrap around what they're, they're proposing that they come in and install conduit everywhere in the county so that we can take and put our own fiber in it. And we said, well, we're not, we're not in the fiber business and, and we're not gonna have a central station. I'd, Am I, is that the same impression you got as well too, mm -hmm. Steve? That it, it's, it's, it's a lot of pie in the sky kind of talk. I, I just don't see it going anywhere. Maybe I'm being narrow-minded, but I just don't, don't Excuse see me, it. But Edgerton is doing the fiber right now, yep. and they have different crews to do this and different crews to do the tubing. You know, the tubing guys put it in, and then they leave, and then the wire guys come later, and then the... Who's the owner of this facility? Woodstock Telephone. Yeah, yeah, I see, exactly, yeah. But, but they're proposing that we own all of this. That the county would own it. So no, and, and that's always been my quandary: is how do we mix public money with private industry? Yeah. So with well, and these guys just do tubing, you know. Yep. So that's why they're the pushing the tubing. Yep, the duct work. Yep. Yep. Uh, so that was on the nineteenth. Then on the 20th, then we had our Southwest Health Human Services up in Marshall again, uh, worked with Beth. We went in, had quite a discussion then with, uh, the, do you remember the resolution that we had to pass then for, for uh, Prime West? Rock County especially really balked at even signing that resolution. So did Murray. And so did Murray. Once Rock County got it going, Murray County jumped on the bandwagon too. But then you seen in Luke's report how Prime West pays to the others. Yep. Right. That's right. And they, we got the same report before that meeting at the mental health. Mm -hmm. So it was black and white there. Yep. And then Greg has to come back with it. Yep. That nobody, well, you just seen it. Yep. They don't believe that, that Prime West reimburses better. Yeah. They just don't believe it. And of course, they're really pushing our, uh, our, uh, Dividing our expenses with health and human services are, are uh, <clears throat> how we fund it. I can't think of the correct term now. And actually, uh, Rock County was the one that developed that formula in first in the first case. And now they're now they're saying that that formula is not fair. Yeah, they're so upset with uh, Redwood County having so many out of home placements that it skews. It costs to have them. Well, yes, of course it costs to have them, but that's part of the reality of it. So we tried to stress the point that, again, that's why we are the joint powers. We're all in this together, and it kind of spreads out our risk a little bit. But they're not hearing it down there. They, they want it their way. So, Well, and then when Southern Prairie went to Prime West, yep. and they didn't, there was $11,000 they thought they should have. They thought that money was their money. Well, that came from Southwest Health Human Services. It didn't come from Rock County. And think about that. Where did the majority of the profits come from? Right. And we didn't get anything put into there. No. Well, that's why I was asking about those reserves from. Yep. Where did they get that $4 million I mean, reserve? Yeah, where does that come from? That's right. I wonder, too. They were working in the red for three years. Where did that money come from? You know, reserve. Gov government reserve. is supposed to be pay its way. But. Yeah. So that was, that was an interesting discussion, I thought, at Health Human Services. So there'll, there'll be more to come there yet as well, too. Uh, then on the 21st, then I uh, had a, a OB work group meeting up at the hospital. 25th, then the Rural Minnesota Energy Board that you'd cover as well. Also, one of the other things that too is, is our uh, going through our yearly budget. We're going to keep our fees to the counties the same. We're not going to increase that fee. I can't remember yeah. what. We had a fairly healthy balance in, in, in our account there. And then there is coming up uh, the, 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 look at the date here. I think it's on the 24th. 
we're going to be on the 24th of August. We're going to tour this uh, energy burning facility in Mankato. So you guys are all welcome to come to that as well too. It's going to just let uh, let uh, the office uh, know. What are they Jason? burning? Garbage. Burning Good garbage. Burner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you've been through it before. I'm not. I went through the one at, by the Twin Stadium. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to be tied up at a different meeting that, that day, so it won't work out mm -hmm. for me. But it's really amazing how how the calendars come together. All the conflicts we have. <laughs> we got to pick and choose which one am I going to. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'm I want to go on that tour. I haven't seen that previously either. Then, uh, oops, back in August. So on the 27th, then, we had our transit advisory you talked about. Uh, again, same thing with buses, too. We're still waiting on buses, so trying to make the other ones last a little bit longer. Are they able to get them? It's when ordered them for two what? years, three years. I was going to say, a year crazy. and a half for sure. They're not getting buses either. They're still waiting. They did talk about, remember, too, about using the sprinter-type vans with the load in the back instead yep. of the side. and where you have smaller, like maybe a one person or two person trip, that type of thing. And is it basically, it's almost like what, two for one, yep. about $80,000 oh, for one of those versus 160 plus for what you see driving around town but now. It'd save a lot of gas more though. efficient, wouldn't it? Yep. Plus the driver. In some cases, they said, yeah. Yeah, the, the driver. driver needs one less step, one. Uh, Doesn't on. have to have a CDL for right. Yep. Right. It's right. Yeah. And it's not a new concept. This question's been asked for years, but of course the DOT, oh no, you have to have, oh, yeah. you have to have the big bus. So now finally they're starting to relent a little bit. Well, maybe the smaller ones would make more economic sense. Technically the bigger one's safer maybe, you know, yeah. over the long haul. But mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the route, uh, the route still isn't in, in, in effect now. And if the, remember before they told us they weren't using the route because they didn't have drivers. Well, now they've hired some people. I think staffing-wise, I think they're in pretty good shape. They did get a couple, like you said, just yeah, yeah. one out of Sioux Falls even. That yep. Moved out of Sioux Falls, just like a Sioux Falls. And he already had his full uh, bus endorsement. Yeah. Thing else he <laughs> came for. Usually they, 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 that's quite an ordeal to get people licensed. I was going to ask her how come she didn't hire him on the spot. That's you know? right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Had to go through pro, pro, protocols. Yeah. But that concludes my report then for July. Okay. <clears throat> on uh, the 6th, we had a personnel meeting. On the 12th, was commissioner's meeting. On the 13th, we had Southwest Mental Health. That got to be kind of a involved meeting. A lot of board members don't want to increase levies. We got reserves, used reserves. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... We should talk too a little bit about uh, uh, labor with with that differential pay. You want to talk about that? I forgot about that. Differential pay for, for the for health and human services employees for the. Well, this is mental health. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I thought you were talking. About <laughs> I'm trying services. to figure out where you're coming from. Health and human services. But uh, Southwest Mental Health has had a problem with employees since Avera opened up their new facility about time of COVID. They hired a lot of people that we had working for us that lived in Sioux Falls, they, they just offered a lot more money and we couldn't compete and yeah. it's hurt. And, and again, Luke is actually an Avera employee and he actually lives in uh, well, almost Sioux Falls, I guess he's no, in he, Valley Springs. Valley Springs, so. Actually, Manly, I think is his That's address. But uh, then when we went out and tried to hire back, We've hired a lot of people, but then our insurance, they can get better insurance someplace else. Mm -hmm. That's one reason they're leaving. So we've increased our insurance benefits. We've done a lot of different things, but you just can't get the glue to hold to keep people there. Mm -hmm. Can't, you know, keep talking, you know, keep letting more the younger people. If you can have them five years, that's about the limit. They're on to something else. It's just the way society is today. But insurance is pretty key, I think, to retaining yep, people yep. or attracting people. And you hire somebody, and it seems like you get them going, and all of a sudden somebody offers extra. A lot of this happened with COVID. They were offered a big job sitting at home working mm -hmm. where they can make, you know, 
an extra ten, twenty thousand, not even have to drive. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then on the fourteenth, we had soil and water, and we kind of talked about that. Uh, Health and Human Services on the twenty, we all. I did miss the part about the differential pay. Uh, we were having a hard time <clears throat> finding nurses to work with. Uh, I shouldn't say the well, but there were some uh, uh, juvenile workers, not just the nurses, but also the social workers working with juvenile. And, and they're actually proposed a $2.64 an hour differential pay. But we just couldn't do it because, it, 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 first of all, we don't know if the union would even allow us to have a separate class of employee. But again, differential normally is shift work. It's not because your job is harder. So it's gonna make more sense to do either a market study or something. If, if, if indeed it's harder work, then they should have to adjust this, the pay scale for that instead of us making differential pay. Plus it would have cost how many million of dollars to, to make that differential yeah, shift? 1.3, something like that. It was, yeah. So we, we think that perhaps some of the employees aren't too happy with us up there because we said no. Yeah, that was kind of a, a heated discussion for a while. Yep, it was. You could sit there and kind of watch the employees. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, on 26th, we had the commissioner's meeting, the hospital board. 27th, we had radio board. That was pretty much trying to collect all the paperwork to send in for the grants. So we had about three counties that were needed a lot of work done in about 10 days time just before yeah. we can send it in to get our reimbursements for the grants. But uh, And then we started talking about what we're gonna spend money on for next year. <laughs> so, and we did approve for uh, the Jasper area. The Jasper Ambulance and Fire Department serves four counties part of Pipestone, part of Rock, part of Minnehaha, and part of Moody. So it's a whole bunch of radios we're trying to get yep. that we can operate with one radio for both mm -hmm. states. So. <clears throat> Do they have any new requirements coming up or through the radio? Well, uh, they keep talking about it, but they keep finding places that have got radios all they need a new battery. They've sat there on a shelf for 13 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> Brand new radials, just sitting on the shelf. Got to put a new battery in it, just like new. But it, now they're getting outdated because they've come up with so much, much better radials. There's a lot of waste in that program when it started out. <clears throat> The radios are out there, but they aren't making any parts for them anymore either. Yeah. So it's when the parts are gone, you know, they're not going to have them. So you're going to cannibalize other radios to keep them going. But I know Steve, and they aren't supporting them anymore. So mm -hmm. Steve Tate from the cities, he comes down. He'll have a box. He'll give it to somebody. Take what you need and pass it on to your neighbor. So he can use anything. It's just radios and a lot of parts and pieces. Mm -hmm. Just patch stuff up, especially for the small fire departments. So, is there any use for that older equipment, or not really? If it doesn't work anymore, it doesn't work anymore. You're just gonna if there's parts available to make another radio work. That's about all you can do with them. Yep. And the technology has changed so much. And so, just like our cell phones, you know, it'd be analog or digital. You can get a, remember the old old radios actually had crystals in them, and those yeah. have been gone for a long time. Now it's all electronic. Tuning. Yeah, they're all computers. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's all I have from our report. I guess we'll wait a few minutes here for Emily. Want to take a little break quick? Yeah. Stretch. Have the room in. Yes. Okay. All right, we're back on. Okay, we'll resume our meeting. And Emily, would you like to come forward and present your budget? <laughs> All right. Do you want me to go down line by line or do you have any questions? 
No, there's no reason to go no. line by line. Okay. Um, salaries were all done according to the plan, two and a half percent. Yep, we are. Benefits were according to the plan too. So. Yep, and we're full staff now, so we're good to go there. Um, the top three lines, like the marriage licenses, the county keeps $25 per license. We're kind of on pace to do around 50 licenses this year, assuming it will be similar next year. Um, the charges for services, we get $14.5 uh, per recorded document um, out of the 46. Uh, the rest of it is all surcharges from the state of Minnesota. And then um, the miscellaneous other revenues, that's from the copies we make for people and um, we have an IDOC online service that people can subscribe to and, and view documents and print, um, which they have to pay for that way. So that's where those revenues are coming from. Uh, other than that, uh, further down, um, we have our, our regular annual conferences. We've got summer and winter, winter conference, um, torrents, trainings, things like that. Nothing seems to be changing in that aspect. Um, the second page is all uh, non-levied money that we, so we take in. Um, again, per recorded document, we have a technology fund and we have a compliance fund. Um, Ten and a half dollars per recorded document is a surcharge that we get towards the technology fund, and eleven dollars per recorded document goes towards the compliance fund. Um, mostly everything on there, uh, document imaging, that's going to be our annual fees that we have for our, our program that we use and just the annual fees for um, yeah Tyler so it's Tyler Technologies and which is essentially Document Pro our main main uh, company that we use for our program and IDOC which is that online service that we offer to other people. The budget that Emily's talking about now is on page 38 that's the county recorded reserve accounts oh, right? That's yeah where we're at yep the reserve accounts yep. So switch over to page 38 on that. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. We did talk yesterday. We're going to uh, take the 6276 document imaging and we're going to zero that out. Yep, that is a project that's that fun. was started prior to COVID and we're actually in the last phase of it. I got an so email a couple weeks ago. Right, that'll be done. Yep. Perfect. So we should see one more invoice this year for it yet and then that's that project is complete. You're right. Yeah. But it's still good. Yep, still, it's projects done, so that's good. We also pay for um, the assessor's office and the auditor treasurer's office as far as like their printers and copiers. We pay for that out of um, the funds in the reserve account as well since there are land, land records. I'd just like to state along with this that they have such a good relationship with our recorder's office even back to when Mary Ann was here that I've heard around the state that there are county recorders in the state that are sitting on hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in these reserve accounts and these compliance funds and they won't use it for anything. It just keeps building up and building up and they won't hmm. use the money f to help their departments that work with the recorder's office, which is what it's, what it's for and what the state came up with that for. So it just makes no sense. So I'm very pleased that we're using those monies here and what we're using here offsets our cost to the levy too when we're doing this. So it's like, it makes just perfect sense. It saves, well, it saves us money. A lot of dollars. And the money that comes in is getting used to help provide services to our offices and the recorder's office to the public. So yep. very important. It does make you wonder what they're thinking they're saving up for though. It's like, it's like their own little kingdom or something like that. Maybe because <laughs> they can't personally use it in no. any way. So. No, no, because the technology fund is I mean, it's, there's state statutes on what you can use that for right. and the compliance um, monies. I think that has to be board approved according Fine. to what we've said as well. So mm -hmm. it's just sitting there. I see on your training you had $800 for training. Is that going to be enough Cause with your new personnel and so forth? You're going to have more training this year, I assume. Mm -hmm. back on page 30. Yeah, I 
like you said, there's not very many conferences that you'll be going oh, to. There's your summer and winter conference. There's a Torrens training coming up, but because of COVID, everything's kind of gone to online now. So if that's the case again this year, we'd probably both be able to just sit and be a part of that. Um, and that saves on transportation and everything else. Lodging yeah. and meals. Yep, the lodging. Oh, yeah, because typically they're, a lot of the conferences are up north by Brainerd, sometimes or by Duluth. So there's quite a quite a bit of traveling that has to be done with those. Now, have you got the same state requirements as far as credentialing as well, too, like what they've got with the assessors, or is that a little different? No, we don't have that. Yeah, I know they've got their mandated, deal. mandated trainings and stuff, but no, we don't have that. Getting getting into the flow, getting comfortable, things are coming together. Nice. Yes, it's it's together. been going as well as it could be. So Mary Ann's been, been a lifesaver. That's why. <laughs> What's that? I said I haven't been up to visit you, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's going very well. Like I said, we're full staff and uh Mary Ann's been a lot of help, which yeah. has been great. That's so, great. So happy to hear that. The transition's going well. Yep. Good teamwork. Yes. Any questions for Emily? Nope. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Emily, thank you. It wasn't that bad, was it? Good job. <laughs> no, it was not. Thanks, Les. <laughs> Take care, day. Emily. Yeah, you too. So we recess until one. Yep. Sounds good. We stand recessed until one o'clock. And you're leaving at one thirty. That's what. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying. So we can. All assume right. We're live. Okay. We're on video, we will re reconvene our budget meeting. We have Kyle Career here. And I don't know. I'm not probably going to fill an hour up. That's so, okay. I um, I never know. If you guys got lots of questions, that might be good because my budgets have not changed much from last year. So I'll I'll just kind of walk through them too. I highlighted a few outline items that we can talk about a little bit. Which one are you going to start with? Um, we'll start with 103. 103, which is my zoning page 34. Planning and zoning. Um, the fees is just a random unknown amount. This year we have not had any planning commission meetings. Um, I think only one board of adjustment meeting, so it's been very slow. Um, I did just receive an application for a conditional use permit for the, the waste lagoon ponds for the city of Trasky. <coughs> that will be coming up, um, bringing that to the board in the future. Um, so those fees basically are, <coughs> are just covering the cost of our planning commission per diems and board of adjustment members along with the notices that are required to be published in the paper. <coughs> So we are not making any money off of our zoning fees, but covering our, our basis of, of bills. So I don't know if that's something the board wants me to look at. If you want to make more money off of the zoning things, I, I don't try to do that just to break even. So right. if, if you're good just breaking even, I'll kind of plan for those fees to stay in check with that. I think it's fair to the public that yeah we don't need to we're covering the expenses right as long as we're not going yeah. backwards right no but i don't think we are but we're like i said we're not making money off of this are so. they planning to do those lagoons this year yet at trotsky are they gonna are, is um, they, are they moving we're ahead gonna do the conditional use permit so we'll find out there what the plan is i would almost bet by the time we get through this and if they've got other things that the city has to do which i think they do it's probably going to be next 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 year. year i would think but Maybe it's possible. At least it's getting closer to happening. Hopefully. At least they're making progress. Right. Yep. Um, salaries, um, like I've said in the past, the, my budgets are set up into three. So the zoning is a third of mine, solid waste is a third, and then the other third is ag inspecting. Um, per diems, again, that's just a random unknown amount. Um, and then as far as our office, the, the telephone and a lot of the postage and, and basic publishing expenditures, mileage, meetings, I kind of lump most of that stuff under 103 <coughs> rather than trying to spread it out over every one. So the 103 covers a lot of the base office operations and expenditures. Um, but like I said, nothing major. 
Um, if you see anything that jumps out at you, speak up. Well, as I look through, I'd rather see your fees that you're thinking of be more in line. I, instead of overestimating your fees, it gives us a more truer picture of what we're looking at, I think. That last year you had about 48.50 in permits. This year you're at 48.25. So you're. Yeah, that's, yeah, you, know, that's you don't know. I mean, I'd rather have you maybe be low and get more than. Yeah, it's always kind of a guess. I don't like to see it more when you're, the fees are way up and you're getting $2,000 on a $10,000 fee because that just skews actually what we're getting anyway. So right. we don't need to levy more than we need to. And just so you know, too, as we get closer to getting moved, I have a budget in here for the SWCD extension building. Okay. So I have a building budget for that. Okay. And I was going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that, too. Water yep. too which is kind of separate from the county's budget. Yep, that's fine. Um, next budget would be 392, which is our solid lease. <clears throat> Let's see, 392... Seventy-nine. And I don't know, Luke. Uh, we did have a solid waste committee meeting. Um, Dan, or yeah, Dan and Luke, Steve and myself. Mm -hmm. We sat down. We kind of looked at a five-year projection, projected budget of our solid waste expenditure reserve account. Um, currently, starting in twenty-two, we've got about a five hundred and thirty thousand dollar reserve in that account. Our, our revenues run about 295 and currently our expenditures are right around 477. So we're overspending a fair amount in our reserve account, which over a five year projected expenditure plan at the current rate plus some increases, I would anticipate by 2027 that this reserve account would be depleted pretty much almost a zero. So that was the reason for our meeting. Uh, Luke and Dan did not support increasing our $36 solid waste assessment no. this year, um, but it's something that we're gonna need to continue to look at going forward just to ensure that we, we maintain a, a balance that the board is supportive of in this reserve account. Well, this, we'll know more the next time contracts come around too. Right. <laughs> that was the other thing. Our con recycling contract will be up for negotiation starting in 24 or 23. Um, it'll expire at the end of 23. So we'll know mid-year next year where we're going to be at with that. There's talk of legislation that will increase our score funding. Um, potentially, we don't know where that's going to go at with this next legislative session. And so there's a few of those unknowns, but um, and then the other thing is that this reserve account is is mainly just dedicated specifically for solid waste related recycling type expenditures. So it's not something that affects the levy. Um, it's it's pretty much self sustaining through that thirty six dollar per unit solid waste assessment. Uh, I would assume on the recycling it's going to get a little higher because they we're here talking about fuel surcharge. Yep. Yeah. I. I I estimated a budget increase of about 20,000. Right now, our recycling costs are right in that 100, and I, and I can cover that here quick when we get to that line item. But um, So right now, our $36 assessment's generating just under 200,000, 190,000 is what I budgeted. And then we've got some delinquent and penalties, which brings us right up to that 200,000 for our solid waste assessment. Uh, 5332 is our score grant from the state that's running about 70,000. That's the, the grant that could potentially increase maybe double of that if legislation is passed to bring some of those solid waste taxes back towards the counties that we did support a resolution to that effect. Um, 8,000 in fees is, is just estimated based on commercial and out of county material that's brought to the hazardous waste facility. 5897 is our reimbursements. The 29,000 is what we get back from the Lyon County landfill um, based on a $5 per ton uh, payment back based on our tonnage as it gets disposed of there. Um, again, salaries. Um, that a third on that one too? Yep, that would be a third on that. Printing publishing, um, that's our, just kind of our 
you know, recycling promotional type things along with radio ads. News fees, trainings, um, electricity would be for our hazardous waste buildings. Same thing with garbage collection. And then line number 6254, recycling. That's budgeted at 205,000. This is where um, our current recycling contract is running about 160,000 per year. We're paying about 40,000 for the disposal of our appliances and electronics through SW out of Wilmer. And what I projected starting in 24 that our recycling contract cost would probably go up to about 180 is what I was guessing. Probably a, you know, a 20, minimum of a $20,000 increase I would estimate. But that's unknown, so <laughs> that should be significantly more too. Hopefully not. Um, maintenance and repairs paid to the highway department, 6383. That is uh, approximately half of Trevor Erickson's wages, the sign tech out at the highway shop. And then 6957. This was done a couple of years, a year or two ago, where we, we did pull some of the solid waste monies and put it towards the allocation for soil and water for solid waste related time and expense for recycling and other things that are done by the <coughs> staff there. Any questions on solid waste? I have none. At least that covers Trevor's salary and whatnot then right yeah and and yeah trevor's paid about a about half by sign tech through the highway department approximately half through you know solid waste and then we do also pay part of his wages for the time that he spends on soil and water things so if he is helping matting or seeding things like that we're billed separate for those times to, that pay to get paid directly to the highway department also for the okay. soil and water so it, it's a very unique and very yeah. good position to have that we can share somebody in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. If there's no questions on 392, we can go to 601. Page 88. Um, first line item is 5154 septic permit fees, um, $3,500. This is a kind of an unknown amount. This year, we're probably going to have more septics that get completed than we have in the past. It's just been a booming year for septics for some reason. I think there's three going in right now today. So, Good. so it's been busy. Um, our current solid or septic fee is $150 um, that we charge for those. I should also mention. Um, Back under 103, our, I don't know if you want me to go through some of the fees. Our, our feedlot permit fee is $200. Um, that basically covers the cost of publishing um, has gotten extremely high. So that it basically covers the cost of putting the notice in the paper along with mailing letters out to the neighbors for the public notice. That's about all it covers. Does it even cover that anymore? <laughs> I, I think it's actually more than that now. Um, I think we got to do something there just to keep it even mm -hmm. and then like i said our septic fees are 150 that covers me to go out there probably tw a minimum of twice i go out there to look at the site verify the soils with the contractor and then try to get out there at least once if not more to verify that the system went in according to the design so it's just covering bare minimum staff time that's spent on a septic system not including um you know scanning putting everything into laser fish and, and tracking and keeping records of all these. Um, but but that think we should bump that a little. I talked to us. I've heard from some of the other counties. One of the contractors said, "Well, you guys are cheap." So um, <laughs> it sounds like the other counties are in that two to two fifty range. So we're not excessively low, but I think it's something you know. Even like the feedlots, we could. If everybody's kind of gradually bumping up their fees, I think we could probably do a $50 increase on each, the septics and feedlots. I think so uh, too, be because everything is going up. Mm -hmm. Our our plan, uh, conditional use permits 
kind of going back and forth here a little bit, but our conditional use permits are $800. Our variances are 500. And I think we're kind of mediocre around surrounding counties on what they charge for those. Um, those are the primary fees. When you do a septic system, do you GPS to where it is? So it, it's the same, you, so you know where they are? We can, it's all, we can, you can GPS and it's gonna get you in the proximity. Yeah. Um, there is a map that's attached to each of these, like an as-built, so it'll show the shed and the pipes and- Does that go onto the- It's scanned in. Recorded or something? Nope, it's not recorded. It doesn't it's, record. It's, nope, none of these are recorded. They're just scanned into LaserFish where we can access the data later through the county so record somebody system. else comes and buys it and you yep. can prove that it's done right. right. Yep. So I, and most of them are mounds. So I mean, they're pretty obvious where they're at. Right. It's not like, right. um, there are quite a few old systems where nobody has any idea where they're at. <laughs> so. Taking people's word. But I can sure look at fees. Um, <coughs> that Maybe we should we put that on for an upcoming yeah. meeting. Yeah, we've got, we'll do a new fee schedule. If you're gonna do increases, we'll do this in December and approve okay. them for the first of the year going I guess into if 21. I was to make a suggestion, yeah, it would be probably 50 on septics and 50 on feedlots. I don't so think that's going to 200. Yeah, 200 for septic and 250 for feedlots. Then you've got, what's, I don't know what essential services are for 500, but <laughs> that's what it says in here. Essential services, 500 rezoning, 500 plats, 800. Building permits. Oh, essential services would just be a utility. Um, oh, okay. So it'd be like power lines, things like that. It's basically just a standard conditional use permit. Okay, gotcha. Then building permits were 50 and double the fee if they uh, were tardy and didn't come in and ask right away. Well, right. if it's, if it's a, a conditional use permit for a utility, why wouldn't it be the same fee as it is for a conditional use permit? It should be. It's not, it's no, 300 yeah. less. Yeah, essential services is five and conditional use permit says 800. We should make that eight, the essential service. That was the same? Yeah. The 850 is future. Did you want to increase all of them? I think we should. Because I was, those would probably cover the their basic. That's the majority the of them? Yeah. But if I, I kind of have a, I can review them closer myself too. And if you guys are kind of indicated just to double check on things and at least cover our costs for sure. Because at last meeting of the year, we usually approve that. Yes. Because right. yeah. yeah. we have to have a public hearing for it. So. Yeah. And I'll maybe look, touch yeah, base take a look at the fee schedule on the G I'll drive and see what you think. Touch and Touch base with other counties too, just to confirm yeah. where things are at. and See what some of those ads cost is. They're, that's like, expensive. Like I know it's a minimum of about a hundred. It's about a hundred and twenty for the the legal paper, and then it's another seventy fifty to thereabouts for the free star. So yeah, we're probably going behind on the feedback notices. Yeah, it's especially since we're putting them in both legal and the free star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. which that was the board's wishes to do that. So, right. Well, you probably end up with them in both papers, probably right. Edgerton and Pipestone, yeah. and then the free star. We don't do the point, yeah, we just do the legal and the free star. Okay. okay, so yeah, we'll do that later this year. Schedule, yep. Um, <clears throat> state grants, 45,000. Um, if you want me to go into detail on these and explain what they are, or. Sure. The 45,000 is the, the natural resources block grant through the Board of Water and Soil Resources, which covers our, our water planning, which is only about 14,000 that we get from that. 8,000 for Wetland Conservation Act. 18,000 for septics and about 3,000 for shoreland. Um, those are the programs that, that those dollars are, are provided from the state to, to soil and water, to the county, back to soil and water. And then the MPCA 50,000, the next line is our feedlot dollars that we get from the from MPCA for for being a delegated county admin overseeing the feedlot program. And that's based on the number of feedlots that you have in the county, um, along with some other calculations that they do for that funding. Work comp um, and property liability, that is um, soil and water. 
the county pays out the MCIT for the soil and water insurance. Refunds reimbursements is 6804 is the is previous 45,000 and 50,000 paid out, you know, at 95,000 back to soil and water. So that's just a pass through. <coughs> and uh, the remaining 25, in addition to the 50,000 from solid waste, equals the 75,000 that goes for soil and water allocation annually. Area 2, Ag Society, RCRCA, our dues is. Um, we did have a line item for the Missouri River One Watershed One Plan, but that was never requested for dues. Is. So, Luke, I don't know, is that something that's going to come in the future? Good question. I'm not sure. I didn't budget for it. So, I mean, it's a thousand is what we were estimating previously, but I did take it out this year just because it's kind of an unknown. Not that it's a big thing. We'll have to find out. Um, aggregate tax. This is just a dedicated account that the a portion of the aggregate tax goes into for reclamation or other expenditures. Um, as of right now, I don't know what the account balance is on there, and we have not spent any money out of that account. So if the, if the board wishes me to do something there, let me know, but I, I don't expect it to grow very quickly. I think it's only 5% or something like that of the, the aggregate tax. Yeah, that's something that's really hard to keep track of. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been doing anything with that, so if you do want me to do something there, let me know. Um, the repairing aid, 91900 This is money that we're getting for the buffer law enforcement um, that we're currently spending on uh, the next two line items, professional services and computer software. The professional services, 15000 is budgeted as a projected expenditure for contracting with ProWest to maintain and provide GIS services for our GIS online system that we have. Um, you can see for 22 actual, we've spent about 10,000. So I haven't been utilizing them much, and I think some of that was equipment. So we haven't been needing them as much as, which is probably an okay thing. We just kind of call them as needed. And then the 15,000 for software is our, our software maintenance contract with ESRI, who is the company that provides the GIS software for for the mapping things online and the, the desktop software that we have in our office and the assessors have in theirs. Any questions on, on some of that stuff? And that we still have a fairly good balance in the, the repairing aid account. Um, that did pay for our pictometry flight, which our last payment was done this year, <coughs> it will be done this year. We are not planning to fly again until 24. Um, and the costs of another flight are going to be right in that sixty to seventy thousand again, probably. So there are adequate funds for at least another one to two flights, along with the current software maintenance and contracting with ProWest services that we're providing. So I think we've got a pretty good five-year plan to have a flight done every four years and have those contract services. But just be aware that. When this dedicated account does kind of go away, it's going to be, you know, about forty thousand that the county would have to divvy up to cover those annual expenses. Yeah. Did lidar ever get off the ground? Lidar is done. Um, Southwest was completed this spring, and they are currently under the review of the data. They're starting to work on the Minnesota River, which would be everything you know northeast of us. But I have not seen anything back, come back from the state, but it was all flowing this spring. Okay. That was the 18,000 that we put in last year towards that, so. Speaking of maps, have you ever heard anything about the updates to the FEMA flood maps? I mean, I remember- They're, done. They're complete. Are they done now? They're all complete. They're just not officially adopted. <laughs> um, I have them on GIS. <laughs> okay, good. And we're being told that when we're issuing permits that we're supposed to be using the draft maps they're not official yet, um, but we can use the draft maps for, for zoning permits and other things. And then I did just work with uh, s, s Truck Repair. They're, they were paying flood insurance, so I use, what I've been doing is requesting letter of map amendments for people that are currently shown in the floodplain that request to get out based on LIDAR. So 
I'll do a map of the old floodplain, the new floodplain, along with our LIDAR data from 2011, provide that to FEMA online, and then they'll review it and make a decision and then send it back out. So, yeah, I've been doing more flood yeah. work with people than what I've ever expected. So, but yeah, the, the new maps will even make it better. So that'll be a good thing. So, so there's quite a few that are able to get out of the floodplain, yes. so to say. Yep. Well, they can, with the, with the imagery and the LIDAR, you can show the new flood lines and you can see where the buildings are at. Um, SNS did have to have a, a land surveyor survey if the elevation, if it's within a foot, to verify the elevation of the floor of the building. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's it's pretty straightforward. So oh. good, and that makes a big difference for their insurance, I would assume. It does. It makes a yeah huge difference for cost. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those. That's another one of them things that. You don't really plan to do some of that stuff and then you end up spending a lot more time than a person expects mm -hmm. working with one person on just a specific you know flood issue but to them it's a major major thing so are there many people that will be in the flood area that wouldn't be before? i don't think so no, no i think the maps are just going to get more accurate and it'll exclude more than what it would include okay yeah good um we're on 5051 special assessments. These are dedicated, these are all separate accounts from here down for a ways um, with our septic loan program. So this is expected uh, to bring in the 60,000, the county money that we have in that revolving account, 60,000 that'll come in as far as tax payments. And then if you look down at 6931, which would be that 60,000 going back out again for new loans to contractors again. So it's money coming in, going right back out um, for septic updates. And then the next, well actually the rest of the accounts are our old loan accounts that we've got that we're still receiving payment from landowners and paying payments back to the state for the principal with interest. So money, pass through money basically. And then we've got the, the new monies for the, so that 60,000 will just gradually increase the more loans that we provide with that new money in the future. Any questions on 601? Next one is 604. This is our ag inspecting account. Um, not a lot of activity here. It's basically just a third of my wages along with some dues and meeting expenses. Um, the biggest thing with this account, there was legislation proposed last year that every county would get $10,000 from through Department of Ag for the Ag Inspecting Program. Um, Department of Ag is hopeful that that will <coughs> be, be reintroduced this next legislative session and that it will likely pass with the traction that it got from the House last year. Um, so. There might be a line item coming for this account in the future where 10,000 would be, you know, brought in. There is, there continues to be, you know, weed work, um, not, not a horrendous amount, but I mean, just different noxious weeds that are coming about. And the Department of Ag is wanting us to get more involved in some of the seed sampling, which we haven't really done too much here. We've relied on their staff to do those. And then our biggest Probably our biggest workload would be providing commercial applicator tests within the office for the general public that are commercial applicators. So that's kind of what's happening in ag inspecting. The weed inspection part of it has dropped off considerably, hasn't it? It has, which that, is a good thing. Um, yeah. And we've made a policy of a number of years back where we've got a large discrepancy between the north and the south, where the northern townships really choose not to have any weed activity or enforcement um, they choose not to to pursue you know enforcement of the weed law where the southern townships really do so the county made a policy that we're going to have a, a procedure that's going to require the townships to initiate the the enforcement action on the weed law um, provide the you know the landowner notice give them some time to take care of it and then if they don't get compliance they can forward it to me and then i'll follow through another step and then Part of that process too is having an appeal committee at the county level that if there's a, a complaint, 
somebody can appeal it to the appeals board, which is two commissioners, Luke and I don't remember who else. I think it's me. Has, okay, that you two would be the appeals board that would hear those those complaints. So there's a couple organic farmers in the southern part of the county that it might be coming back up again, uh, the weed issues. So. Right, and those are the difficult ones because they are limited, but they, I know, I've, I've heard a number of presentations on organic and, and if a person is doing it right, they there's times where they just have to go in and completely destroy the crop if, yeah. if that's to the point of where it's at. One of the guys got an electric, or yeah, he uses fire for weed control. And you know that wasn't practical in the last two weeks because he didn't want to burn everything down. So, <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got on six oh four. Is there one other one I missed? Wasn't there? Uh, GIS. Yep. Page thirty seven. Not much there. Yeah. And no, there, it's two thousand dollars. Just talking about GIS a little bit. We contract with Lyon County, Mark Volts to maintain our parcel maps, um, which, is, which is the one that's posted online or it's now on our server. So Mark accesses it through the server, updates it, and then it's it's there automatically, you know, at the same time. Updates online with the AS400 every night. And then he also updates our 911 database, which is goes through the sheriff's office for dispatch to know where the address points are at. So. Those are the two things that are mainly being done by Lyon County, so it doesn't take a lot of time, but it is it's quite essential that, that those you know parcel maps in 911 be updated. Seems like it's a bargain. It is. <laughs> and the, the way the process of the way it works is my office handles the 911 addresses. So if someone's building a new bin site or something, they'll request a, an address from me. I'll forward it to Mark, he'll assign an address. And then it gets dispersed out to Trevor at the highway department, myself, the auditor, the assessor, so that they're all aware of the new address. The sign is posted after the construction is complete, typically. Um, so that's the 911 process. I, we charge $75 for new signs. Um, and then people can replace them themselves, actually, if they need a replacement sign. And work through the highway department to get those. The parcel mapping, Joyce is taking care of that. So when she gets a split or a combination, she'll she'll draw it out, um, verify that it's accurate and complete, forward it to Mark along with the maps and the deed. He'll redraw it, and and then it's all posted and done. So pretty slick process. Um, yeah. Every county is different, yeah. but it's it's working fairly well. Yeah. The only issue we ever see with that and talking to Joyce in the auditor's office is what people see on the screen when they see the mapping, they believe that's exactly what it is. And it's not necessarily, I mean, just where it's drawn on the map, so, oh, what? Those trees, those are my trees or something like that. Or that driveway's in somebody else's. And it's like, it's not necessarily 100%. So. And the, yeah, and the imagery can be off, you know, up oh, to yeah. twenty feet or more, where the just the angle of the picture yeah. will distort yeah. where the lines are at, also. And look like the neighbors' buildings on your property. Mm -hmm. And there are situations that are like that. Yeah. Um, we just I was working on a septic down by Edgerton, and it's it's a disaster east of town <laughs> where it's all subdivided, and they've it had the surveyors most. out there to look at it, and they said, <laughs> you know, they need to get every person on track and start moving lines and re-recording yeah. everything because it's lines are going right down houses so i think mine's okay <laughs> no it's it's a problem <laughs> and mine's a problem is, the mapping is never going to correct it it's just uh -huh. more of a they were drawn as they were described on the deed and and hopefully if nothing else it'll make the buyer seller the, the owners aware of the yeah. issues and hopefully they can pursue yeah. getting them resolved but yeah, Joyce will tell you way more about some of the problems than me. So I, I don't know if you're, this is your area or not, but who uh, takes care of the 911 science, enhanced 911 science? The, the maintenance all, of them or? Maintenance of them and reporting them if they're lost or something. Yeah, highway so, department. So I, highway I, department. Okay. They can notify me, and what I'll do is notify Trevor. Um, Doug always was really good about 
you know, marking them down if they needed repairs or if they needed to be pulled out. Yeah. That way we're, we're eliminating some of them old ones where the buildings were demoed. Or disappeared, yeah. Right, and like I said, the, the homeowner can call the highway department, they can get a post and a sign for, a few, you know, 10, 15 bucks. You can put it back in yourself if you want, or if you want Trevor to come out and do it all, that would be the, you know, like a new sign, so the $75, yeah. so. Some of them have bought out there 15, 20 years now, so. And there, I would have to talk to Nick about this, but I know talking with Dave Halbersma, there was a, a new reflective study for signs that was being done or required that all all signs had to comply with that reflectivity. That came down through the townships a couple of years ago. Right. And you had to have somebody that was over 60 years old with you because they assumed they can't see. So you had to be so many far away from the I science. resent that. <laughs> I, did, I resented it too because I was over 60. <laughs> so I really resent it. That's prejudicial. So it's something we, we may want to start looking at. In Like I said, talk to Nick. We may want to start looking at replacing the intersection signs and maybe all of our 911 signs to more of a, a newer reflective type yeah. material. I'm not sure what's required. But that would be a, a that would be a conversation I think that should happen through probably the nine nine one one or the what's your new what's your sheriff's they got nine one one committee it, yeah I mean that's it, still there gonna include Casey um, Nick everybody involved yeah. and right. everybody could talk it over my opinion I think the county should take it all over because when they were put up the townships had to pay for their green signs mm -hmm. and some of them thought it was okay others fought it tooth and nail. And it's so much easier if, I mean, we you do it right through the highway department, you run it through a levy, everyone gets a yep. couple of pennies and on it, heck, happened. we have to do it. We're not starting over, but there's gonna be a time, like Kyle says, we're gonna have to replace the signs, and the intersection signs. Yeah, and Trevor's sure. doing all the intersection sign maintenance yeah. now, so it's not, because like Steve said, there was a formula that these five paid for their own, these other ones didn't, and it was a mess, so Dave just said, we're gonna, Dave and Doug said, we're just gonna take care of all the so signs. Doing that. And, and be done with it. It's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that goes back to what, 97, 98, I think we did that? The, the original signs. Yeah, that, Harlan was that's Harlan probably right. somewhere in that area, I think, is when it started. And that was relative, I was relatively new yeah. on the township board then. So they've been out a long time. I mean, that's right when 911 addressing started for us. And, yep. You know, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been and contracting that, with Gene from CAD Consulting and stuff. Yeah, with Gene, Gene Birch. Yep. Yeah. And it's still a good thing for ambulance, right? Oh, it's good for everything. Oh, yeah. it's People wouldn't be able to find anything if they didn't have their Google Maps. Well, <laughs> the only thing that was messed up there is that the state should have, I mean, that Pipestone is good and Murray, but I know Lincoln is a mess. Nobles is a mess. It, some of them go backwards. I mean, so every county, there's no... No consistent. That was a mistake. Yes. They should have done like South Dakota, South Dakota did and was, did the whole is, state. Start one end and go to the yep. other. Yeah. Here we've got roads and yep. some intersections have five signs, some have two, and you get up to Murray or Lyon County and they've Lyon's got bad. signs everywhere. And some of them are by people and trees and fruit and <laughs> yeah. And then I'll just touch a little bit on soil and water budget. Um, Les and Luke sit in on soil and water meetings to know where we're at, but um, our soil and water budget, we get, we've been getting 125,000 the last five years from the state, this uh, district capacity monies that I'm sure you guys have heard about. Those dollars were, are, are put, you know, for, for basically increased capacity of soil and water. Um, we did hire Laura to beer with those dollars. Um, and every year our programs change, our grants may just you know jump from 25 from this agency. I no, there is no you won't have this. I'm just talking out loud, so okay. Um, budgets change quite drastically with soil and water based on you know a twenty-five thousand dollar grant here that may come one year but not the next. Right now, um, this last year I was for twenty I'm looking at about a $48,000 surplus, um, which I'm anticipating not actually having a surplus, but probably spending more of that capacity monies that we get from the state for projects rather than for salaries. Um, just to kind of wait and see how things turn out with some of that stuff that was kind of supported by the board and 
Luke and Les at our last board meeting to kind of do that. And then in addition to, to those normal dollars that we've got, we've got about a 80, 90, actually right close to $100,000 that we were, we've set aside for a building fund that we're planning to kind of <coughs> get those dollars available for <coughs> and increased, you know, building costs type things that we have. So we were looking at hopefully building a, possibly a garage on the properties of the, the new building if, if everything comes to be. Um, but none, none of the details are worked out for any of that stuff as of yet. And then Steve, you were saying you have a <coughs> separate account also for yeah, the building? Yeah, uh, for the board's on page 47, if you want to look at it. You found that already. Um, I didn't know exactly how to go about this, so I kind of used the um, social services, public service building as a kind of a template to kind of go through and figure out. Because really all I've done is uh, utilities, uh, Water and sewer isn't going up too much, but electricity is quite expensive. Heating fuel will have energy efficient furnaces. So these are placeholders. I don't know exactly how they're going to come out. We'll have to have a first year and see where we're at next year and adjust. Yep. So mm -hmm. once we get into 23, um, obviously we have to have garbage and some sort of maintenance, snow removal, uh, any rentals and service agreements. Those come back to things like uh, the fire alarm system, those types of things we have to, that are going to be constant and if there's any IT stuff in there that goes along with it too so and then I, just yeah. plugged a little bit in there I don't know if you've got any other thoughts or what we need on here but no and I, I just think there's going to be a lot of unknown building oh, yeah. little things that come up but I think we're, we're sitting well between I think for soil and water to be able to cover those unknowns that that the county shouldn't you know if, yeah. if it's just random things like carpets here or ceiling tile there here and there that can be included <coughs> in some of our right our bills or, or pending board approval, I should say. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, Are there that's any more on the building as far as yeah, when they might start doing something or no, that would be a question for Wayne. I'm I've only been working with with Mark Griebel on the you know getting the possibly a garage put together. He was, he was very positive about having us have an architect involved until that was not the case, um, to get more of a, a to scale drawing with everything laid out. Um, well, we're still working on the two scale drawings. Unfortunately, wanted to use uh, uh, Angela, Angie Borsma, the local gal out of Brookings, but she didn't have the time for us for this summer and fall to go do the planning and stuff and help us through it. So. Um, did talk to um, Pipestone Building, and they're willing to have their person draw out the plan for us, get a scale oh, drawing. Okay. So we're, we're still gonna get that done. So Wayne confirmed that with me yesterday, so that's still gonna happen. But we need something to scale, so we know where the walls are gonna go, if, what we're gonna do with the ceiling, if we're gonna do a two by four or two by two acoustic ceilings, where to do that. I mean. And we're really waiting on Mark can actually start on the outside of the building virtually. There's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, so. And if we do build the offices, then there's going to be, I think, at least one more window. Yes. Right. Need to be put yeah, in. Another window. Um, on the... If we're ripping out a wall, we're likely going to want to replace that carpet. entry way carpet. Um, there were some questions on whether we should be replacing the entry doors or not. Yes, I'm working on doors too. Um, we'll so there's a lot of those little on unknowns. We need to replace the lighting. three doors. It's all going to need to be redone. Lighting and LEDs all got to be in. changed because right now they're all T8 fluorescents in there, and we can get uh, when we use electrician, they'll go ahead and do. We can get grants through Excel for um, and then the return for duct. LED. Mm -hmm. So return duct work would need to be redone. Yeah. And that'd be easy with a drop ceiling. Right. Yep. Yeah. And also a lot easier for Bill to get cabling right. through the building too. Right. So. And we talked about, you know, when we had a building committee meeting out there, we talked about insulating some of the walls, maybe for the conference room, a little bit more than what they were. You know, we tried to measure the best we could out there that day, but it, it looked as though the offices were going to be, you know, the two new ones potentially would be adequate size, but not any too wide. Um, but they will fit in there the best we can do. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of little, a lot of little things. So it's, it's, and it's, it's hard to piecemeal all this together and, and none of us are, are solely dedicated just to see this over right. 
that it gets done. So that's where it gets kind of left in a lot of limbo. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to avoid something from being overlooked that could have been avoided. So, so I'm not sure if, yeah, if I need to be doing more or less or, or. No, we're, you're okay right now. Once we get moving on things, we'll get, we need to know what Mark's schedule is. See when he wants to start right. in that. If we can get the drawing in the next, you know, few days to a week or so from Pipestone Building, that would be great because obviously a lot of the material is coming from them. They should be able to provide I something. They will, though. Yeah, we're probably about ready to have another meeting again. <laughs> Let's have some more information. We we'll get that accomplished anyway. But any other questions, comments, recommendations? We'll look on at the garage, all of closer at the fee schedules. On the garage, just make sure you make it big enough right now. Okay. Because <laughs> you're buying the two end walls. What you put between is, right. is the cheap part. <laughs> yeah, right now we've got three vehicles. Um, we try to put one of them out in the, the shed in the winter if we don't utilize it that much. Um, but So we would have three vehicles. I don't believe any, I mean, extension is not anticipating getting anything. But we were looking at hoping to have a, a storage area as part right. of the garage also. Yeah. Yep. So basically four stall. Three stall and storage. So yeah, could potentially four. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we do another full four stall or not. But they get kind of big too once you start. Mm -hmm. Three stalls and yeah. three and a half is, is pretty good sized. Mm -hmm. Well, if you make it 48 foot long, you could have four nice stalls. Yeah. Three 12 foot You're going to do bays, it now and try to add on later. 12 foot bays. Mm -hmm. 10 foot doors. Right. So I think, I think we're good. Yeah, pretty good, 45 minutes. Not bad. Good job. <laughs> well, thank you, Kyle. Yep, thanks. Matt, thank you. Anything else? No. Nope. Yep. Okay. So thanks. Later. Yeah, thanks. You guys need a break or anything for a minute? Page two. Nope. Keep going. Huh? Oh, you're just thinking about you guys. Uh, Mr. IT. 25. Come on up, Bill. Did you want to start? 25 and 21. So I've got the two budgets, the data processing and IT, 063 and 065. Which one are you starting with, data processing? Yeah, data okay, processing. Okay, that's that page 21. change on the 065 we we had just some small increases from from both CPT and from Vanguard and from MCCC which one are you doing 65 or 63 63 okay sorry So that's the dues and subscriptions, 6242? Dues, dues and subscriptions, and it's um, for the, where we pay, pay for the tax system, HR, um, IFS, and the CAMA computer-aided uh, asset thing for, for Joyce. And then we pay for the maintenance for the S-400. All that much changing. We'll be upgrading the OS on the AS400 this October, um, so we'll be we should be good to go with that. I'm thinking probably till the end of life on that machine. Um, and then we'll. S what is end of life on that? It's not that old, it's, is it? It's, <laughs> it's not by it years, huh? It seems like it's not that old, but how long ago we get it? Yeah. Okay. Huh? Um, Four already. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a lot of. 
ads are ready for Power 10, which is the next model. So, oh, yeah. So I'm sure they're gearing up. Mm -hmm. Last time we waited until IBM sent us a letter that said, we're not going to give you support anymore. And that, that's what oh, sure. when we moved on it. So it's kind of been one of those things that we, do we really budget for it? It's going to be 40 grand. You know, that's usually what, where it is. We've gotten a couple for 31 and we've gotten a couple or like there was at least two of them that were 48. So, you know, it's always in that ballpark. But do you, do you plan on replacing it at six years? I'm, I mean, they, they send me the ad and it's got all these new bells and whistles and things it does and this one's barely breaking a sweat for what it does. But I don't want to not have service on it because right. that is our bread and butter for the tax system. Um, kind of, you know, I've always kind of had it in the back of my head that CPT will figure out something and, and maybe we'll, you know, out of us 28 counties, maybe we could all pool together and buy like a half a dozen of these bigger ones and just have them at different counties and we'll all share them because we get, we got enough connectivity between us to make that, mm -hmm. make that a thing. But I don't, I don't know where CPT is on that. Mm -hmm. They need they need somebody with that vision that will really drive what what they do. Mm -hmm. so they've been just kind of a placeholder, just kind of keeping it going. But I believe they've got an executive director now. They do. Yeah. Yep. So that just recently hired, I believe. Yeah, within the last couple of months. Yeah. Yeah, I think back in June, wasn't it? Sounds about right. <clears throat> but I think I think they should focus on their four products, which is probably tax. And then I think we should use the buying power of all the, like a co-op mm -hmm. and let's, let's ditch like Kathy's HR product and let's buy something that's modern. Yeah. yeah. She, you know, she is. Buy it all together and, and then and rather than reinventing the wheel with, with she really doing. wants to get out of this. It's just not working well. It doesn't work well for her to run reports or anything. It just is not a good system, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. It, it, nothing they did wrong. It just hasn't changed. They aren't putting anything into it either. To they aren't really. Upgrade. They're just putting out fires when they yeah. can. And, they're, they're... and then last time we bought the S400, we bought that out of the recorder's right. fire fungus. Correct. Right. Yep. So it came out of that money because it affects those, all the offices up there. So we fees take care of that. So we do that again. I think it was around 38 somewhere, 39,000 last like time. 38 or 39, yeah. It was under 40. Yeah. I don't know. I can remember that we had that meeting that morning here. What well, gets paid out of sixty two sixty? Professional services. Professional services. So, um, Redstone Technology out of Sioux Falls is Le that Leon Olson that we've had for several years here, and he's. An ex IBMer that has his own shop, and he's he's what we use for doing our maintenance, just put updates on, or just keeping us in the right direction. And like, we had a drive go bad, and it phoned home to IBM. IBM had the part ready and everything, but we still need to do them to get mm -hmm. to get the guy in the right in the right uh, space or the right the right account so he can actually manage it. And he's helped us with security on it and, and everything else. And what's what's interesting is this must go back, our, our 400 must go back into the 80s. We must have had a system 36 mm -hmm. when they ran their system way back then. So they've never, we've gotten new hardware, but we've just kept this bucket of the OS and everything together and we just imported it in a new one. Like that's how we upgraded the last several times I've been here. We did a full system save and then put it on the new box and then went back in and changed the, the like the serial number for the backup and, and the things like that that, mm -hmm. that enhanced on that. So we pulled all these users from way back in the 80s along with and and it's like wow there's like probably 40 users out there that we have set to disabled now but it's like who is this person? Why can't we just get rid of them? And then it's been explained to me that, well, they possibly created some libraries and without spending a whole bunch of time to hunt them all down, 
if that's a library that's something else that's running and here's dependent on and you delete their profile, their library is broke. So it's without Leon to be able to, to find that kind of stuff if something's broken or whatever, we, we need it. We need to use Leon. He's, he's not as much to us like Sean is for the IT side, but, but he's in that realm. Does he charge us an hour? I want to say it's something like three hundred dollars an hour. Oh, okay. Is there ever going to be a time we don't need an AS four hundred? I'd probably ask this before, but <laughs> okay. I mean, a couple of the other there's other counties in the state, and they like they went with Manitron, which is Thompson Reuters now, and that runs on a Windows platform. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that we find convenient with the AS400 that they have lost when they went to that Windows machine. Um, the, the AS400 can run, the, all this stuff was thought out and figured out back in the 80s. And it can do things that a Windows PC just, just can't do, um, like transactions. Um, somebody comes in and pays their taxes. Mm -hmm and we plug that into the 400, it's like live right now, mm -hmm. that in the system knows everything, everybody knows that they paid their taxes. If it was a Windows based, that wouldn't be available. You might be able to have some kind of flag on that that says, well, something happened with that, with your property taxes, but we, we don't know what yet. And then overnight, it'll run and do all the calculations, and then it'll come up the next day and, and say that it's been paid. And it just, just Things like that are what, what happens. Um, whether that, I mean, that's maybe a, not the best example of what yeah. kind of the, the way it Makes processes sense. stuff or not. But. It looks based on this that we have not used anywhere near what's budgeted for the last couple of years. You think that'll continue to be the case? Um, I on just that line item, Luke. Yeah. It's hard to say, right? We had seven, what do we have now? 70. I mean, it looks to me like 50 would cover it. It does look like 50 would cover it. What came up? There's a reason we punched it up there, 20,000 last year though. And I believe that was for something we were doing with Vanguard, but maybe that didn't cost as much as we had thought. Um, well, Vanguard, we just approved last meeting for another seven years with Vanguard, so that's not going anywhere. Right, that was only oh, 13 something a year. Yeah. I think that was for just uh, maintenance, I believe. Yeah, but that, that wouldn't Or licensing, out probably. That, out of that line item? Yeah, that was licensing that for Joyce. I don't know where that came from, where it was paid out of, but. We, up, we um, upgraded that server this year, but we must not have paid what, what, uh, what we had anticipated. But I see that we were we were um, down quite a bit so far in the IT. I don't know. I'd say let, let's let her buck and see where it is next year. I, I'd hate to pull anything out of that um, too early and not know. We do have a little time left to visit with her to see. So we'll have Leon. We'll have Leon in that. We're gonna spend. We're gonna spend at least as much as we've spent already on it. Yet this year. Right, but that's still only get us just it's over still fifty. About, about twenty. About twenty thousand more than, than the, what we did last year. I don't know. I can't come right. Check up. all your. Check it out when we're offline here and see if there's something there we can bring it down let's do it okay I just put marks in a check mark or a question mark by it so we can come back and revisit that it's like to find ones that are five figure and up <laughs> <laughs> any other questions on that on that uh, department
software just keeps trending up. Huh? It does. Let's continue trending up. And this one, that 6402 software, is that for the AS400? It's for, for everything. Everything, okay. Yeah. Costs are more expensive all the time, so. Yep. Blew it out of the water for this year, so. All right. Okay, IT, you ready for that one? Sure. 25. I made another sheet. No. Uh -uh. No, I don't think I have that one. This kind of says what kind of breaks it down. Okay. Getting back to CPT, Bill was talking about the Duluth Officer Division. I can't remember his name. The guy that just went to the city of Marshall from the county. Um, I can picture him, but I just can't think of his name. To the city from the county. What department was he in? Counting. He was an auditor, I think. Oh, the, the guy that used to be the state auditor? Yeah, right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should know that guy's name. I'm starting to smell smoke. <clears throat> huh? I'm starting to smell smoke. All the wheels are burning. Wait. Lauren Strom Stromberg? No, no, no. auditor treasurer. Uh, oh, it just says vacant. Pull back. What was his name? Mober? Yeah. Yes, Mober. No. EJ. EJ. Yeah. EJ Mober. Yeah. yeah. He always kind of got things focused out. He kind of put CPT together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He went to the city because yeah, he, he wanted to big income. Went to the city as financial director. Sharon got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Bridget's position with and some reimbursements on top. Um, our salaries went up a, l a little bit. Um, Bridget had a little bit more of an increase to, to, as we changed her job right. at the beginning of the year. Um, our cell phone and air card bill just seems like that kind of climbs a little bit too, not, not a whole bunch. Ambulance charges have increased the same. Um, the subscription is pretty much the same. The training deal we worked out was increased a little bit. Um, professional services and computer services, they both kind of go hand in hand. It's almost getting hard to differentiate one from the other at this, at this point. So we might just drop the one and one. Um, consulting fees are, are what we're spending with Sean. That's, a, that's most of that right there. Um, 
a new item on here is is the the rack space rental in Nobles County, but we'll be we won't be paying the five hundred a month that we, we were currently paying paying to uh, Medex. PG Custom Solutions for that cloud storage. So that that's really a wash in there, but it, it, it's new on, on the cloud. <coughs> We're doing that upgrade on the website and with our annual fee on the website, and that might change just a little bit if we do that agenda plan as well, which I think will be. Minute SMI thing. We got we got the letter that said we're getting the bill and here's how much it is, but we haven't gotten the invoice yet. So, what is that for? That's that uh, uh, strategic cybersecurity information sharing that that we've been we've been doing. We got our original, not original, but our second set of firewalls from that program. Um, we pay for the the eyes on the screens to watch in case something bad comes and our logs go to them so they're always looking at our logs and they're looking at everybody's logs at one time and seeing if they can find a correlation in there somewhere okay. so that's important and then uh, the gopher state one call is our notification for locates that we have coming out not the actual locates just the all those tagged together, they do, they do come up to quite a bit of trouble there. Um, we've got some, I should just hit those right there. I'm gonna do that for later. Rentals and service agreements. The firewall support is probably the biggest thing that we have going on right now. Um, the two new firewalls are, are working great but we need to keep buying the updates every year. They, they work on them, they, they come out, sometimes they come out a couple times an hour. Um, the switches and the SAN support, the IBM SAN support will go away next year because we'll be off of our IBM SAN soon. But they, we'll, we'll keep them probably for some kind of an emergency. We won't be able to let the support laps on them on that at that time and this is starting to almost be, be almost the same song every <laughs> year um, the locates the, uh, the they sent us when I uh, registered the new chunk of fiber that we have in the new mile they didn't really they didn't really change anything so We'll see where that goes. I'm going to just leave that right where it is at 6,000. That, that has been very close mm -hmm. each, each year. Um, but we'll see We'll see if that changes. You'd think it would have to change a little bit because. Yeah, you would think so. Um, but um, we do purchase stuff for other funds and then we get reimbursed back. That That's kind of a constant that comes up every about the same time. But next year we are doing a couple for the highway department so that, that's the, why that is bumped up to 5,000 um, supply stuff stays about the same mm -hmm. All right, computer software we'll be doing our renewal on on um, beam Theme, we just passed that renewal, so we'll probably take we could probably take that twenty two hundred out of there because we're gonna be good to go for next two years. So that that has since happened since this we put that in place. Um, <coughs> so we keep two the same. Um, our laser fish, we've got our, our dark trace in here. We're in that for another three years at twelve thousand a year. Um, we'll be we're always buying more Microsoft licensing um, and more licensing on the servers and then we get hit for Cal's because we have a license for the user on top of everything else 
And our v VMware is our big expense, and then that'll take us through 25. And what does that do? VMware is what the, the hosting software that all of our servers run on top of. So VMware is what runs on the actual server hardware, and then a Windows server runs on top of Hosts, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to, the hosting software. There's a couple different flavors of this, so the VMware being probably the, the largest market share of it. Microsoft has Hyper-V. It, it's another flavor of it. Um, we didn't go that way. We went with VMware actually all the way back to 2009. Um, it, it saves us on buying separate a separate computer for every single server we run. We, we, we pool them all together on a bigger piece of hardware. Equipment under Oh yeah, that, that's the one we broke out. So that's been about 10,000. I, I don't know where we sit on that one at, at the moment. On sixty four eighty. So we split that sixty four eighty one off and we moved that one up a couple years ago and that's been interesting just to see where that sits instead of having to uh, having to have purchase reports for everything at a hundred bucks. 100 bucks seems like it was pretty low because sometimes 100 bucks was for the, the keyboard, you know, depending on the keyboard. <coughs> you know. See what that number is. What do you what, on your sheet there, Steve? What do you have on twenty two for sixty four eighty? Yeah, for sixty four eighty. Uh, ten thousand. It's been ten thousand twenty three, twenty two, twenty one, and on your sheet anyway. And what was the actual? At eighty five hundred and twenty one, ten thousand and twenty two, and ten thousand and twenty three. Do you know what the actual was in 21? Uh, actual equipment under 300? Yeah, under 300. $1,927. 1927 And then actual so far this year is $2,575. We might be over on that. I don't know what we're, a little bit. what you're buying I'm on that. I'm not forecasting that to be being much bigger. It's, it's hard to judge. What kind of stuff are we buying that that's li that little under three hundred bucks? Like drives and stuff like that. It can be. Okay. It can for be drives, but it wouldn't be a replacement drive. It would be for something new. Oh, okay. But if we build a complete new box and it needs drives, then we put that all together in one line item and, and call it out as at um, sixty four eighty one. Mm-hmm. So that could probably be cut in half, is what you're saying? That's kind of what I'm saying, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> a rugged laptop costs four and a half thousand. Yeah. Wow. Um, and we're going to be buying. And they don't last. They're not that rugged then, huh? Yeah, but they're in cars all the time. They get beat up, don't they? They do get beat up somewhat. Um, it's it's strange. Um, we, 
Dell ended up replacing half of them on warranty because they kept overheating last, last time around. Um, the guys like the like the Dells. We've had a few problems with keyboards. Other than that, they've been pretty durable. The, the problem that we will run into is they just won't run the software anymore. Yeah, but they, they, they kill us in the butt. So the 17 are for law enforcement, law basically, enforcement. right? That's all so put, put LE in front of that so you know they're for law enforcement then. So, so it's not just going to... Four and a half thousand dollar laptops not just sitting on somebody's desk, right? No, they're out in the vehicles with mounts and racks, and it's yep. expensive to put them in a vehicle. Um, hopefully, we can remove the, the racks or the the holders, the, or the mount or whatever. Man, Power don't supply, get, don't get old. the base. Uh, yeah, the, the, the mount, the yeah. There's a huge backlog of those worldwide where they're not available for yeah. for every brand, and uh, you know some of the some of the things say say 23, 24 before they get the dock, docking space, the docking station space. So my what we're going to try to do is to buy Dells again. That's the stock that we have. Mm -hmm. Otherwise. Otherwise, I, I, I is part of the reason they don't last is from like the weather. I mean, you're either sitting in the hot sun in the summer or freezing in the winter. The, the, the cold is the, isn't that big of a deal on them. We run solid state hard drives and, and stuff like that. The, the heat is the, the and then the location they need them is right in, in on the deck. Right. Yeah, pretty much yeah. too. So it's right, right in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they just. Uh, it's a tough thing to right. control mm -hmm. the environment. Right. So is it fair to say right now we don't even know if these are going to be available in twenty three? We don't know that. Yeah. But we need Actually, to play. We need to keep we them could, there. We could probably say that about all the hardware. Yeah, that, that's that what I figured. That's I've been hearing from other counties too. Is like. Everything's expensive. Computer stuff's going up, and you're lucky if you can get it. Right. I'm I'm short about five still for this year. I'm trying. I, I want to find at least the same model for for Kim and the SS we have mm -hmm. that that I got. I found one for Chris and one for Lisa, but I'm not sure. It's not it's not there. Hmm. And yeah, the the other laptops are just for other people and. That's just kind of how it's um, you know shaking out. We're only down to about four four other desktop workstations. Yeah. We're just replacing them by on age. Right. So we're just how many years are we getting out of a regular laptop? Four. Four, and then the ruggeds. Yeah, same. Same four. You try to go that too. But then we lucked out with the Dells and got a bunch of new ones because they had problems. About so we half. got yeah. About so we got half new ones. With So in the next next slide on 6650, 11 more SSD hard drives, if those will be available. I'm still gonna try to try to find the the other 15 or 16 I was not able to get, get this year. And then we're back into security cameras. And uh, boy, this has been just a really sour project and it's taken forever and we thought it was ended. And uh, and it's hard to get them here, and when we get them here, it's, the equipment hasn't been right. You know, we have the wrong parts, and they're having trouble getting parts. Some things they get right away, and they, and they come to do it. But So we got the new system in, and it's up, and it's running, and then it's, um, we ended up with, with 14 cameras that, from our old system that we can't, that won't record. 
we can see them, but but we can't get them to record. Now we replaced we replaced twelve when we initially did it, just so we'd have cameras that were going to work with this. But now we're back down to we need another we need another fourteen. I I found some. Um, I I grab them when I can, but we're going to be um, we're going to need probably. So it's twenty five thousand, and they're about two grand each. Ish, around there. So, so I mean that's nine years old, twelve and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, we got two printers to do next year, or one we'll do right at the end of this year, and then one we'll do next year. So we'll pay for them both, and we're gonna pay for one we'll in twenty two, one, one, one this, this year, year, one next year. And then one so we're talking like copier printers, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. MFPs. Yeah. Um, the smaller ones, um, you know, we've got an extra one right now, but nobody's looking for those. And then let's see repair supplies, and we always end up with a little bit of maintenance on our fi on the fiber one way. So I'm ending up, I'm, I'm seeing it at, I don't know what the percentage was on that other calculation, but I'm at like 4.99% over what we were last year. And then we pulled out those couple of things, so it's probably going to be down less than that. 5% was 27,000, so it's down to probably at 2.5%. It's just been a really strange, strange time to uh, try to find, find this kind of stuff. Well, even with that new chips bill they passed in Congress. That's going to be years. It'll be years, It'll be years before years. any of that stuff will actually be available, if they got the money out immediately, which they won't. Right. Any other questions for that? Nope. Yes, it is what it is. Yeah. <coughs> oh, a little bit off. This is what it is. Oh. Yep. Well, thank you, Bill. All right. Thank you. Moving yeah. by RIT, we gotta have it. <laughs> yeah, we can't operate without Bill. Not anymore. <laughs> nope. We'll That's job security. Or Bridget, when you, <laughs> yeah. 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 Should we take 10? Yeah. Sure. Reconvene, and we're going to do building and grounds. Wayne, you have the floor. Okay, page 40. The one I saw right away was on the third page, of mine anyway. It's at 63.79, other miscellaneous and service charges. For some reason... I've been having five thousand, and I thought I'd cut it back to two thousand, and I put twenty thousand. There's eighteen thousand dollars savings, eh? Good. Can we do that anywhere else? <laughs> <laughs> so, would you want two? Two thousand, yeah. But then I was looking at my electrical, the sixty-five fifty-one or sixty-two fifty-one, and I've been raising it, and all of a sudden, you know, it's dropping down some. So. So I put fifty thousand for that. Then you, I don't know if we even we, if you put what law enforcement's getting. Yeah, started. we changed that two years ago. That you that all the electricity was coming out of uh, the building and plant instead of splitting it up, and we took it out of the jail. Yeah. So. But they said they were still getting charged for it. I don't think uh, so because I told Sandy not to two years ago, and they were stopping to do that. So. Well, these these things still have budget. 
We had like 16,000 of them. Where did that you go? It's coming stock. You talk to me about it. But Maybe it was heating. I don't know. It's one of the ones that... JL, my I, you know, zero. So I had 71,000 in 2022, but then I... Yeah, where are they? Back, back down to 50,000. Did you find it? Yeah, it's right here. Zero. Yeah. That's supposed to be coming out of a building plant. Yes. So why it's being changed here, I don't know. And I think I'm still all right with the 50,000. Well, you still have... We, electricity costs aren't getting any less, I know that. Well, so. well, I jumped to the 71, and then... You know, so in 2021, we only had 38. Is the same. 196 and 196, so they're. Is it really twice that, or is it that the full cost? I would guess it's probably twice or, that. That's what I'm thinking. So we're probably at. 39, 39 too. Just under, just under 40,000 so far right. for the year. Yeah. In electricity. I don't think it's coming out of anything else. Um, so then the 70s probably closer. Probably, yeah. There went our savings. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. Just lost your gain. Well, but it ain't quite so bad though. It's only 2,000. True. So then we only up sales right, so that's what. So we upped it about two thousand. Oh well. Yeah, I see where you had those. It was on the fair one. The fair one, yeah. Yeah, then you had the minuses on there. Yeah, so you're gonna make this one a little money. That's eight thousand. Yeah. yeah. So go back to building and plant. Let's finish that one up. Yep. Yep. So is heating and fuel going to be enough? We've been under, but... There's 7478 current. Heating yeah. fuel is split with the jail. So they're at 7229 for heat in the jail. And they're at 74. 70 yeah we're about fifteen thousand into heat right now but is that supposed to all go to buildings and plant too the heating i th is there no i don't recall changing that over just the electric just the electric we okay. moved over but they they might just split it then is what they do this figure they just do a percentage of the auditor's office but then my question for both then there is it enough when you're almost at the level yeah. now and you no, still we got know gas prices are up at least 20 percent right yeah and obviously there's going to be heating before the end of the year yeah we're not doing much right now so this was probably the first quarter of the year first five months of the year what we had on that so now we don't pay much but we're at eight in 2021 Probably should be at least ten. I'm That's guessing. That one. Or twelve. Or I'd say twelve. Go twelve. We don't use it then. We. And they'll change the jail on two fifty one to twelve. 